Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, all you friends out there in YouTube land. We're happy that you've come to join Adrienne and I, and uh, we are continuing in our study of Praising God Through Prayer and Worship by Kay Arthur and Pete DeLacy. Currently, we are on day four. Um, in real time, it's Monday, June the 14th, 2021. And it's at least 458 or nine, maybe 460 days of lockdown. And we're still praising the Lord, right, men? Still praising the Lord. Okay, so <clears throat> today we are on day four, as I said, and we are going to be looking at Psalm 6. So if you are out there in YouTube land, you can uh, go to Bible Gateway if you don't have your own Bible, because we're using the New American Standard Bible for our study. And uh, you can find that version there or at um, Blue Letter Bible, I think. I, I have, I'll have to have to check that anyway i'll put all the links to that down in the subscript or the description box below <clears throat> anyway adrian will you open in prayer for us this morning heavenly father thank you for the new day that you've allowed us to wake up and glory in your presence and in your creation i ask you to bless us today as we read through this psalm and glean from it what you want us to glean from it. I ask that you give us an, um, a um, learning, a spirit of learning, and that you help Luann and I to help each other as we do the study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. So we've already got uh, Psalm 6 up in our Bibles. Now, Adrian, what I want you to do is I want you to read all the way through it for our listening audience and for me, and uh, we'll read it without really concentrating on anything first. Hey, we're matching today. Yes, we are. Testers. Oh, just pulled that right out of my ear. There we go. Okay. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O oh Lord, for I am pining away. Hear, heal me, O oh Lord, for my bones are dismayed, and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O oh Lord, how long? Return, O oh Lord, rescue my soul. Save me because of your loving kindness, for there is no mention of you in death. In Sheol, there, who will give you thanks? I am weary with my sighing. Every night I make my bed swim. I dissolve my couch with my tears. My eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old because of all my adversaries. Depart from me, all you who do iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord receives my prayer. My enemies will be, dis will be ashamed and greatly dismayed they shall turn back they will suddenly be ashamed okay thank you good reading we are going to be looking again we're going to be marking lord and uh for the psalmist the author so um whatever um method you have been using to mark those i uh consistently use a red triangle to mark god the lord and uh, just for the purposes of this study, I started marking the, um, the author, the psalmist. I'm just underlining that and all the pronouns for that with this nice blue, because <laughs> I like it. We are also going to be looking at the purpose, the reason that the psalmist is writing. So as we mark those two things the psalmist and god uh we are going to you're going to hear noise what is it it's the garbage truck oh <laughs> hey you're in a pink room nice oh you must be out front are you yes i am nice okay 
All right, so let's go. All right, and also out there in YouTube land, um, what we're going to do at the end of this, <coughs> pardon me, uh, of this day's study is we're going to be compiling our list of what we learn about God in this chapter. So we're going to be making a list. So you should have a little notebook or, or a, you know, a big notebook for that matter, or a scrap of paper. I don't care, <laughs> but may, for making lists. All right, Adrian, you ready to go? And we'll mark. Yes. All right. Oh, Lord. Do not rebuke me. Oh. In your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O oh Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me, O oh Lord, for my bone, my, sorry, Bones are dismayed, and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O oh Lord, how long? Return, O oh Lord. Rescue my soul. Save me because of your loving kindness okay make note of that there's that word loving kindness i did the wrong color oh well this one actually i'm gonna mark it while i can because <laughs> it's habit <laughs> for there is no mention of you in death in shell will give who will give you thanks i am weary with my sign every night i make my bed swim i dissolve my couch with my tears my eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old because of all my adversaries. Depart from me, all you who do iniquity for the Lord. Has heard the voice of my weeping. The oh, wait Lord a minute. Wait a minute. Now, we were also marking um, prayer in a certain way. Yes. So the voice of my weeping, I think if God is hearing the voice of my weeping, um, that's kind of like a prayer. Yes, I was. I just marked it and I thought of that. Good job. Okay. So for the, for the Lord has heard the voice of my, we, my weeping and continue. Just give me a second. Okay, sorry. The Lord has heard my supplication. My. Yeah. Supplication. That's another prayer word. That's what I thought. I was just mm -hmm. going to mark it. The Lord receives my. Prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and greatly dismayed. They shall turn back. They will suddenly be ashamed. Okay, last time we were in here, we were marking enemies too. Uh, yes, no, just give me a second. I have to find out how I marked it. Look back a page. And get the right pen, pencil, 
Okay, so the enemies uh, starts in verse seven, I think. Hold on, but I gotta see how I marked it. We, I think we were just underlining it in black. I was just underlining it in black. No, because we marked it the same way we marked sin. Oh, okay. And then we're going to find sin in there too. So we'll mark it. So um, start at verse seven and we'll look at that. My eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old because of all of my adversaries. adversaries. Apart from me, all you who do iniquity. Iniquity. Yep, there we go. And they. Okay, where are we? Verse 10. All my enemy, oh, enemies will be ashamed and greatly turn back. They shall turn back. They will suddenly be ashamed. Okay, good. <coughs> Now let's see what it has to say in our book. Okay. What kind of a psalm is this? Um, oh, what on. does it say at the very beginning? For the choir beginning. director with string instruments upon an eight string lyre. Well, that's kind of specific. So what is it? It's a, it's a song. It is a song, I would say, a song of grief, of agony, of pain. Of yeah, weary with my sighing. Yeah, a, a song of grief and agony? I would say so. A song of grief and agony. Okay. <clears throat> what does the psalmist ask for? Verse two says his bones are dismayed and he asks for what? He asks, Lord, how long? Yes, but that's what he asks. What does he ask for? Uh, do not to be rebuked in anger mm -hmm. or chastened in her it, chastened. Uh huh. What else? And to be gracious, for and, God to be gracious to him. Yes, and? And to heal him. Yes. So song of Greek and agony for healing. I'm yes. running out of the top. Yeah, where's my pen? Because, you know, sometimes, um, and somebody showed me something that I, I used to have one of these little cards. Um, in some places, they publish these little cards with a picture of Jesus on the front, rendition. And on the back, it said where to go when you're sad, when you're angry, all that kind of thing. <clears throat> so yes. this, so we write this down in our um, in our list, and we say, oh, what is that psalm I'm going to for healing? <clears throat> and that's why we have in the back of our psalms, in our <clears throat> sorry, in our study Bibles, we have that. Oh golly. Can't find it. We have that portion, that place where it says Psalms at a glance, and it tells you chapter themes. And it goes through all the numbers. So there's 151, 150? 150. 150 Psalms. And so there's 150 slots. So <clears throat> under number six, we say a song of grief and agony for healing. So when when we're in that situation again, we can say, yes, I know that there's a place for that, a place where I can uh, read about that, where I can pray about that. And we go to that list of themes and we can find it more easily so that we can pray that. Okay, so what appears to be his problem? In verse, uh, in the first three verses. His bones are just, he's pining away and his bones are dismayed. His soul is greatly dismayed. Okay, so there's there's a couple of things going on there. Pining away. Excuse I'm me. just wasting away. 
so that's something something that's both body and spirit don't you think yes his bones are dismayed well that my bones are dismayed almost every day and especially on rainy days like today <laughs> they start to ache and groan and moan <laughs> yeah and you know i mean uh, i used to not think about that very much and i used to think all oh, these old people are always complaining about something but honestly if this kind of degenerative bone disease happens to anybody it's pretty well takes up most of your focus and it makes everything else so much more difficult to get accomplished and it gives you a feeling like you don't even want to accomplish anything <clears throat> oh. <laughs> you know <what> like? <laughs> yeah so um <clears throat> So what does he feel like he's going to is going to happen to him? How low is he actually in verse four and five? He's he's so low that he could die. Yeah, he feels like he could die. He feel, there's no mention of you in death. In Sheol, who will give you thanks? Okay, what's his condition in verse uh, six? Is six? Uh, he's weary with sighing. He makes his bed swim and he dissolves his couch with tears. That's a lot of crying. That's a lot of agony. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've been in that kind of agony for a very long time. I usually can have it under control. <laughs> That's, you know... So every night, so look at these time frame references in verse three. What do you see as a time reference? How long? How long? How long do I have to wait for you, Lord? And then in verse six. <coughs> every night. Every night. I, and, and it doesn't say every night for a, a week, every night for a month, every night for a year. It doesn't say anything, just every night. So we get to understand the depth of his agony, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to look back here again at, um, at the beginning of the psalm because there's some verbs in here. And you mentioned them already. <laughs> that he's really uh, asking of God. Now, when I marked my Bible, and uh, the people out there in YouTube land will notice that I wasn't marking everything all the time. And that's because I've been a student for a while. And this Bible is getting marked up. And some of the things that we were marking today were already marked. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he is, uh, let's look for the verbs. And uh, in my Bible, what I did was I highlighted them with orange so that i could see them but you don't need to do that just make note of the verbs so the first verbs uh do not do not what rebuke yes so do not rebuke so rebuke you bad boy what do you think you're doing okay nor when's the next uh, verse the uh, verb uh, chase nor chasten nor chasten so chasten is a word that we don't use in our culture very much but it might mean getting a really nice spanking taken out to the behind the woodshed get never a whooping been, never been taken behind the woodshed to get a whooping no i've i've never been taken behind the woodshed because there was no woodshed when I was little, but I've been given a whooping. Okay, I'm piling. And then what's the next verb? Uh, be gracious. Yes. And the next one? Uh, pining. No, that's I am. What's, what's, that's what he's doing. I'm pining. Heal yeah. me. Yeah, heal me. Okay. Uh, uh, and then in verse four, what's the next? Return. Yes. And the next one? Save. Save me. Okay, so uh, I pointed this out before in different studies, and I pointed it out on Sunday. 
in our um, in our ladies uh, church ladies hymn saying that some of our hymnody has a little bit of bad theology <clears throat> and we have to understand that there's certain things that operate in the old testament in the before christ in a different way since now that jesus has come and died and been resurrected and ascended to heaven and that has to do with the presence of god in the life of a believer so in old testament times um the, the Lord's Holy Spirit came upon and rested upon people. Uh, the Holy Spirit would rest upon King David, for example, uh, giving him knowledge and, uh, you know, ability for his life and whatnot that he had to do as a king and uh, would rest upon prophets so that they would give God's word. Since Jesus was on the earth, he promised that uh, his disciples before he was crucified that he would not leave them as orphans, but that he would send another like himself, the comforter, mm -hmm. uh, who would never leave them for, nor forsake them. And that was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit first came upon the believers at Pentecost, at the Feast of Pentecost, after Jesus was resurrected or after he was ascended into heaven and it was with great power and a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire, all that kind of stuff. But the point is, is that when we trust Christ, when we accept that his sacrifice on the cross was exactly the requirement that god has to make us right with him to bring us into relationship with him and for us to be considered righteous as we're studying in our roman study um, then we receive the holy spirit god's very present who never leaves us nor forsakes us and that holy spirit the job of the holy spirit is to lead us into all truth and to help us to understand uh, the scripture, which is God's word, his very word, and also to bring to mind all the things that Jesus spoke. So, um, so we, we, once we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, when we've been born again by the Holy Spirit, we never have to fear that we will ever be abandoned again. The Holy Spirit comes and stays. It's we who wander away in our thoughts and our behavior and our conduct from God, but God never leaves us as believers. So that's a little bit of a difference between what, what uh, David is experienced. But on the other hand, you know, when we are deeply in distress, and I'm sure everyone who's watching here has been in some kind of deep distress at some point. Um, we feel like God is far away. And we feel like our prayers are just hitting the ceiling. And um, we talked about that in our study, uh, Lord, teach me to pray in 28 days. And I invite anybody to go over to that study on YouTube and follow along there <clears throat> as well when you're finished with us here. Um, so he is, he is saying return and rest. Oh, I forgot that one. Rescue my soul. I forgot that one. Amazing. How could I do that? Return. Oh Lord, rescue my soul. Save me. All right. So those are the verbs. Those are the things that. Uh, the psalmist is asking and he asks them very early in the psalm and then he makes his complaint right oh ah i'm so tired of all this sighing and crying and tears and your and his eyes have become wasted away with grief like i'm sure that all of us at one point in life have cried so hard that we can't even that your eyes hurt they just feel like they're, you can't, they're just rotting out of your head. It has become old. <clears throat> okay, so what, 
why is he doing all this grieving and crying? At the end of verse seven. Because, because of his adversaries. Yes. And so I'm going to re read here. Um, when David asks for healing, does he appeal to his character or to God's? In other words, is he saying, God, look at me here. I haven't done anything to uh, deserve this. These people are coming against me and, and it's making me cry. And you can see how much I'm crying. Don't you love me anymore? What does what characteristics does David appeal to? God's. And what about him? Verse four. His loving kindness. Yes, because David and we know that God is full of loving kindness and we might call that mercy so mercy is how does that go grace is giving us is not giving us what we deserve and mercy is give is giving us what we don't deserve no yeah. did i say that right i don't know grace is not giving us what we rightly deserve and mercy is giving us what we didn't de deserve yeah i think i said that right well anyway if anybody in youtube line land um wants to correct me they can do that i'm open okay loving kindness in verse four is a characteristic of god we see throughout the bible the word is translated from the hebrew chesed c-h-e-s-e-d which is a covenant term. And um, when you start studying covenant in the Bible, you understand that God never has ever broken his covenant. People have broken their covenants, but God never went back on his covenant and he will never because he's God. Okay, observe the verb tenses in verses eight and nine. So. What what does David know about God? About the Lord. Yeah. That the Lord hears. Yeah, what does he what is how is it written in the English here? Lord has heard has heard. Yes. And in verse 9, uh receives. Yeah. The Lord has heard and the Lord receives. So what does that imply about what um, David knows about God? That God, no matter what, God always is always there. Yes. And, and since it's the present tense, um, I'm reading here, has heard, quotes, in English implies action already completed. In other words, he's talking in verse 8, to those who do iniquity, who are his enemies, who are acting as his enemies. But he knows already that God has heard. And so uh, what that implies an action already completed. He's already, he knows that God has already heard. And we know that uh, before we even put a, a, a word in our mouth of prayer, that God has already seen the situation. He, he knows the situation we're in. He knows. He's seen. But what does this tell you about David's confidence in prayer? It never wavered. Yeah, it never wavered. And because he knew the character of God, he knew that he could count on him. And that's pretty important. Like, I think that sometimes we have to actually, in a way, put God to the test by, by trusting him, him for, for things, and then waiting in expectation to see what he's going to do about our petitions. But David already in this prayer tells 
tells us and his enemies who can't hear him, obviously, um, that God has heard him. And then it says, do you have this confidence? Well, that's a pretty good question. Do you? Can you say, God's already heard this, and then rest? Okay, so our prayer for you, I'm reading the text here. Our prayer for you is, by the end, is that by the end of this study in Psalms, you will gain this intimacy and confidence in prayer and worship that David had toward God. Isn't that marvelous? The more we, the more we study the word of God, the more confidence we have in him. And um, I don't know about you, Adrian, or you people out there in YouTube land, but if you study someone else's word for God's word, it doesn't seem to give you the same um, confidence and anchor in, time, in hard times. Um, because in essence, when you're reading commentaries, you're reading someone else's experience of God and, and the Bible, but it's not your experience. And the only way you can get that experience is by studying for yourself and putting God to the test to prove that he meant what he said and that his promises he'll keep. That's kind of a, it, it's not an arrogant, self-centered place, but God loves to answer our prayers. He loves to show us how great and good he is. He's not capricious and wanting to do us harm. And he definitely does not want um, anybody to perish. That's what it says. And I can't remember where. God does not desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so that's a really good thing to always keep. All right. Now we are going, we recorded a theme for Psalm 6. At a glance, we already did that in the top of ours. I'm going to say what I wrote again. Um, you can have a different thing if you want. It's, it's entirely personal. The reason that we do this is so that we can find in our own Bibles um, what we learned uh, encapsulated in a few short words. So I wrote a song of grief and agony for healing. That's what I wrote. You can do what you like. Okay, so uh, the next time we meet together, we will be taking up day five, and it will be Psalm 7, and that will be on Wednesday, so anybody who's out there, if you're watching uh, close at hand, you can get caught up, and uh, anybody who wants to jump into this study can always get caught up, just start where you are, and go pick up the earlier stuff later. Oh, we didn't write down the things that we learned about the Lord. We better do that. So what did we learn about the Lord today? Okay. Psalm 6. Five, uh, Psalm 6. Okay. Well. Um, kindness. Hmm? That's loving kindness. Okay. Can we go before that? Because there's some things that David knows about God, um, and he expresses them in the verbs he uses. So in verse, in chapter, yeah, in verse, uh, chapter six, verse one, and we are keeping track of where we find these things so we can find them at, uh, uh, later. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's a God of anger. Yes, so God has anger. And rebukes people. Yes. Okay. What else do we learn? Chastens people. And we talked about that because those are two different things. And if you want to really know what the difference is, go and find a dictionary, a good dictionary. And look up those words. Simple. Our mother, Adrian, never... When I was a little tiny girl learning how to read and use language, I would find a word in a book that I didn't understand. I'd say, what, mommy, what does this word mean? And she says, I don't know. Go look it up in the dictionary. 
So I learned to use the dictionary probably when I was in grade one because she, she would never answer my questions. She would always say, go look it up. So I did. And I found out all kinds of stuff there. Um, okay. It's because people are so patient, are impatient and have the, the attention span of gnats. <laughs> yes. so don't do that. Okay. So what else do we find about uh, a God in verse two? Gracious. God is gracious. Uh, what else? <coughs> I am verse God three. heals. God heals. Good. Um, uh, in verse four, what do we find? You Wait, there's, there's something we find out in verse three. Yeah. It's inferred. It's not stated. Okay, then I, I'm not miss, I'm, I'm missing it. Okay, so it, it, when I mean inferred, it means it doesn't say save me. Uh, and, and therefore we can say God saves, which is also an inference. But listen what it says, but you, O Lord, how long? So what does that imply? That he is waiting. Yeah, God has his own timing. And I hope everybody out there in YouTube land, when you're writing down the pronouns for God, you're capitalizing them. I am so upset with our Bibles that, that, that tear down God's authority by not giving him the proper um, capitalization for pronouns. So his has a capital H. God has his own timing. Oh, I didn't write down what verses uh, six, verse four or three. three. Okay, um, six four. God rescues. God rescues. Anything else? And God saves. God saves. Good job. Um, okay, so verse eight. God uh, hears prayers. God hears prayer okay well yeah so we heard that in in eight and nine right yeah good god hears prayers he, he receives interesting i'm gonna write slash receives god hears slash receives prayer good that's good things that we've we found out about God. All right. Um, so we got the theme. Oh. All right. What else? Predator. All right. I guess we're done with that for today. So um, I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that you have shown yourself in today's psalm as a God who can, we, that we can come to in prayer and knowing that you hear and answer. We can have confidence in all the promises that you have made and the way that you have uh, kept your covenant in the past. We see that in this psalm that you rescue us from our evil and uh, adversaries who cause us to lose sleep and to weep and to groan and to sigh and to mourn. And Father God, we just see that you are our healer. And um, we're so thankful to learn this and that we can come to you for rescue from the things which trouble us and for healing from the things that cause us pain. And Father God, if there's any pain or any suffering in anyone's heart who's listening to this prayer, that I, you would cause them to turn their face to you and tell you what they what their problem is, what they need, and that you will listen to their prayer and that you would answer them and that you would not delay. Because uh, in, the, in this Psalm, David says, how long, how long? And um, I pray that you would change our hearts 
to understand your timing is good and that your grace is, is uh, all encompassing. If there's any iniquity or wickedness or sin in our hearts, I pray Holy Spirit that you'd point it out so that we can come to repentance and, and receive your forgiveness and be healed from that too. And so Father, in the, in the interim time be, till we meet again, I'm just asking that you keep these beloved ones close in your care and that they will find rest and healing in you. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you people in YouTube land, I'm going to sign out now and talk to my sister for a little while. And we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like this and subscribe because it kind of brings the video to the surface that helps other people to find it too. Anyway, thanks for being here. Bye.